What's up everybody, and welcome to the epic game of Civilization. I am Logan, aka Laser G, and guys, look at this unbelievable infrastructure that we've built here. We have a plus 12 campus surrounded by all these other amazing districts all across our vast and glorious empire as Indonesia. We just have the most insane campuses. Look at this plus 10 campus that we literally just stole. We didn't even build this campus. We stole it from our good friend Simone Boulevard over here. This is a truly ridiculous start to the game, and I think there's a good chance we can break my all-time record for the fastest win I've ever gotten on Deity Difficulty, the hardest mode in the game. I'm hoping we can win in 150 turns or less, which would be truly crazy on Deity. We are playing as our good friend Guitarja of Indonesia. If you haven't seen part one, highly recommend you check that out. I talk all about why Guitarja is my favorite Civ in the game, why she is so, so dominant, not just in terms of her science, but I mean, look at these tiles too. This is a 636 tile, and this is not even the outlier, right? This is not even an outlier for our Civ. This tile over here has eight gold already, Right? I mean, our tiles are truly ridiculous all across the Empire. You gotta freaking love it. And we are well on our way to taking out our very first Civ of the game here in Simone Boulevard. It's been a little bit of a grinding war, because it's actually earlier than I wanted to go to war. If you check this out on our culture tree, we have been working the whole time to get our unique unit, the Jong, which is basically an overpowered frigate that we can get in, what is the 775 BC? We are very close to this ridiculously strong unit. And once we get it, I think it should be GG for the rest of the world, at least for a little while as they catch up to us, right? Should be a crazy, crazy rush. Before we get them though, it's gonna be a little tricky because all these quadrireams can only attack one tile. So all the cities on the coast have been falling quickly, but you can see the capital only has one coastal tile adjacent to it. That's gonna force me to build a little bit of a land army. We kind of have the start of it here with this man at arms, this battering ram, but we need to build up a little bit. Our other problem is loyalty. You can see we're going to lose this city in one turn. We're going to lose this city in two turns. So it's going to be a little bit stop and start here for the next couple turns at least until we have that land army up, until we have our jongs, and then we should just be able to sweep across the map. And I am freaking pumped about it. If you guys want to see more Civ 6 content, let me know by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, all that good stuff. Really important for me as I'm deciding what to make next. Let me know what content you want to see. With that, let's get started. And I mean, oh my god, look at these pyramids. This is just gorgeous. I love the interface of this game. We are about to steal those bad boys. Let's go. I want to take those from you, Simone. Uh, okay, let's think about what to do next. I think we do need more land army, like I said. Although this city is really far from the front line. So maybe we just build infrastructure here? Yeah, I think infrastructure is key. A bunch of you told me to settle on this niter over here, and I do think that's a really good idea. This is basically our only niter in the entire empire. So I do think we want a settler. Question is, where do I build it? I think I can build it here and that should be fine. So let's go ahead and make the settler and send it over to get Niter. Okay, this city did rebel, but we knew that that was gonna happen. So that's actually fine. Uh, go ahead and use this quadrium to kill this spearman over here. Beautiful, get some more experience. Also lets this man at arms move forward. And we're gonna use the extra movement to actually promote him. Beautiful, move the battering ram up ahead as well. Okay, that looks good. Uh, over here, I think I want to switch out the Quadrium with the Caraval, actually. So Quadrium's going to move out and promote. This is the kind of micromanagement you need to do, especially in early wars, to really, really optimize what you're doing. Go ahead and hit with the Caraval. We do take a ton of damage from doing that. I see, because he actually churned out a Caraval of his own. Wow, that's a really early Caraval from Simone Boulevard. Okay, that's a little bit scary. We do need to take out that Caraval as soon as possible. Maybe we can bait him out of the city. Having him in the city is really bad. Okay, both of these cities have rebelled. This is no bueno. This city is actually going to flip back to Simone in nine turns. Sure. We should be able to take them back, though, so I'm not overly worried about that. Go ahead and get some more XP on all of these Quadrimes. I like that a lot. Uh, and then take back the city with the Caraval. Perfect. Okay, that's our city again. Uh, we have a spare governor over here who I'm just going to pop into this city that we just took back. 
Uh, go ahead and pillage. Ooh, that's a lot of gold. I'll definitely take that much gold. Maybe we can actually buy something that will help us in our journey here. Could buy another man at arms. In fact, I think I will do that. Just so we have more land units and we can potentially surround some of these land cities. I think that's important enough that I will spend the money. Uh, we do need more land units to get the boost here for mercenaries. But I also want to kill this guy. Interesting question of what we do here. Hmm. I think I'm just going to buy a warrior, actually. See if we can't get this boost by just buying warriors in a bunch of different cities here. Uh, buy a warrior here. Buy a warrior here. Go ahead and get a warrior over here. I'm just trying to get a couple turns faster on my Jong. Because I think it's honestly important enough. Wow. Okay, we need a lot of land units for that boost. We got another governor, and I'm actually going to go with Victor, just because I really like the loyalty he gives me, right? You see this garrison commander? Your other cities within nine tiles of wherever he is gain plus four loyalty per turn. So I think Victor is important enough that I just got him. All right, well, the city just rebelled again, and now they have musketmen, so that's a little bit scary. Well, that's going to be a consistent theme as these cities rebelling until I take the cap. Good news is the Caravel actually killed himself on my Quadrium, which is what I was hoping would happen. Okay, Simone really wants peace. He's willing to give us cotton and 20 gold per turn for it. Uh, I mean, I do like cotton, but no deal. Sorry, Simone. Oh uh, man, this is a really grinding war. At least we're getting a ton of experience on our units. We've only lost one Quadrium so far, which is totally fine. Our other quads have so much XP right now. Like, granted, we're doing barely any damage here. Like, look at this. Attack this Musketman, you can see he barely takes any damage. But we're just slowly leveling up our units, which I think is going to really help us once they turn into Jongs. Back in our mainland, I've been doing two things. I've been building a bunch of science buildings like universities and libraries, right? And you can see we have another great campus on the way here. Just because I think the science is going to be super, super critical for getting ahead in the game. The other thing I've been doing is getting more housing. You can see because of our great tiles, we're already close to the housing cap in a lot of our cities. And it's actually important enough that I get the lighthouse. I'm just going to buy it. You can see all of our tiles get extra food. We get more housing. I think that's a really good and important trade-off to make. I'm actually going to go ahead and buy an archer in this city. Both to protect it and because we're really close to this boost, I think. I'm pretty sure we're one unit away uh, from getting that boost. Maybe I'll just buy a scout? Yeah, nice. Okay. Now we get it and we get the Jong. That was important enough that I bought so many random units in order to unlock this amazing, amazing unit over here. So looking at our government right now... Hmm, I think I do quite like most of these cards. The one that I want to replace is definitely to get this in. Plus 50% gold discount on all of our units is unbelievably huge because now we're going to be upgrading all of our quadrooms into Jongs. It's going to take some time, but that is going to be really, really good for us. Uh, and then I quite like this card of our builders getting two extra charges because I'm still building a lot of builders right now. And then we're never taking out this card of natural philosophy, which is giving us basically 50 extra science per turn. So this government looks quite, quite strong to me right now. I have a bunch of envoys now and I'm going to try and reclaim Mitla. Uh, let's go ahead and send a bunch there. Mitla is very important because it gives us extra growth in all of our cities with a campus, which is basically every city. So I really like taking control of Mitla. Can I finally take out his capital's walls? I'm going to attack. Boom. There go the walls. That's awesome. That's super, super important. Uh, you would almost be dead if you attack. So you stay put. Caraval also almost dead if he attacks. Wow. Okay. Our units are not doing well here. This is kind of concerning. Jesus, he just popped out another Caravel. Oh my god, this capital is so hard to take. Wow. Um, okay, well, you have a promotion. Definitely could use that. Uh, we could go ahead and steal this builder. Might as well, I think. Take his builder from him. Okay, this is awesome, guys. We finally can upgrade to our first ever John. Nice, get four error score. More importantly, this might be what we need to finally turn the tide of this war. Oh god, the city just flipped again. Jesus, okay. Let's see how good these Jongs are. Jong's gonna come this way. We're gonna put the Jong in formation with our Great Admiral, uh, which is really important because you'll see here when we attack, you can see we get an extra bonus 
from the Great Admiral and an extra bonus from being in formation with another unit. So being in formation is really, really important for the Jongs. Go ahead and hit the city. Oh my god, this barely does any damage. Jesus, the city is so strong. What the heck? How is this city so good? Simone really wants peace. He's willing to give me basically all of his stuff for it, but uh, no deal, sir. I've almost got you. I think I've almost got you now, Simone. His Caraval is actually running over here. Yeah, I mean, this is a lethal mistake from the AI right now. This Caraval was the only thing that was stopping me, and without it, his cap, I think, is about to fall. Uh, go ahead and hit again with this Jong over here. Yeah, see how much damage we can do now that the walls are gone? Beautiful. I think we can actually finally take this freaking capital right now. Let's go. Oh my god, that was the longest, most grinding war I can remember in Civ. I mean, it's not even turn 100 yet, so I probably should lower my expectations on how fast this should go, but I really thought we were just going to steamroll them once we had the Jongs. Um, okay, so now we just need to take this last city. I think this is his last city over here. Pretty sure. Um, but we're going to see about that. He's got some, like, great, uh, general, like, his unique great generals, but I'm pretty sure his entire army's gone. Yeah, he's got 42 military score, so we basically have wiped him out. Okay, here we go. Attack, and attack, and attack. Look at all this experience we're getting. Honestly can't complain about all this XP. This is quite useful. Uh, can you go forward? No, okay, you can't. You hit there. I think maybe my warrior can actually take the city back. Nice. Okay, those warriors weren't completely useless. Um, I'm also going to put a governor in the city because I've lost it so many times. Uh, so let's go ahead and put Amani in there. Uh, that's this city. Nice. Okay, I think the loyalty should finally be all right now. Uh, we can take this city back too, I'm pretty sure. Yes, we can. Beautiful. Okay. Now we've got this trifecta, including the capital. The loyalty should be fine. Should update next turn. We shall see. Gonna take this amazing promotion on my first ever Jong. So now check it out. The Jong has so much strength. This is an 82 strength Jong right now when attacking the city. Really, really good. So much better than my little quadreams, guys. Got another great person over here. It's another great admiral, okay. Plus one sight range for all naval units. Allows naval units to move over ocean tiles. Okay, this guy's actually quite good. I'm going to use him for now for his plus five combat strength because we actually don't have a renaissance era great admiral, I believe. Uh, but then the plus one sight range is going to come in handy once we're able to retire Leif Erikson over here. Ooh, it's Leif Erikson. That's cool. Didn't even see that. Big fan of the uh, all the Viking shows that are on Netflix right now. Check them out if you haven't. Leif Erikson, super awesome. Uh, we can actually promote all of our quadrimes now because this is our territory. So he's going to move forward as far as possible and then promote when he has one movement left. Little trick for you if you want to hyper-optimize and do these little speed runs. You go until you have one movement left and then you promote. In this case, we actually can't because we'd have to attack this unit. So he can just promote right now. All of these great admirals would otherwise be not the best, but I'm going to just link them up. Yeah, once they're in formation, that's incredible. So all these guys are now linked. Perfect. Okay, we're now in position to get some niter finally, which we desperately need. So I'm not going to hyper-optimize the city for anything other than just getting this niter right away. I think that's the most important. And this also lets us get an enormous sieve, get more era score for that. We actually just guaranteed ourselves a golden age in the next era and we still have 21 turns to go so that's going to be really really big for fixing all these loyalty issues just barely missed the golden age in the last era but we already have guaranteed it for this one uh and then i think i do want to go campus first we've got a lot of really good campus options question is whether i want to splurge for this plus six i think actually this plus five is maybe better in the long run. So I'm going to go ahead and buy that tile and get this plus five, just because I can build other districts near it and give it better adjacency. Yosemite Valley to me. Okay, we find Yosemite. Where is Yosemite? Uh, where was that? Ooh, Yosemite's down here. And there's more niter there. Okay, we're definitely settling. I could use a little bit more niter, and we also get era score for settling Yosemite. So not a priority, but I do want to eventually settle down there. This scout providing a little bit of value. Remember I just bought the scout to get the boost? 
Uh, I didn't actually need him, but always useful to explore the map a little bit. You never know what you're going to find, especially these Arctic areas. They tend to be very dangerous, right? Because there's a lot of barbarians in the Arctic, but there's also tribal huts and other things because no one has been there yet in most cases. So I like to send my scouts all the way to the ends of the world and see what they find. All right, the Jongs are now in position. This is beautiful. Uh, Jong here, Jong here, Jong here. And these Jongs are all in formation. You can see my infinite supply of great admirals. I just love how many freaking great admirals I have. This ability on the Jongs always seems very obscure, right? Plus five combat strength when in formation. But it's actually really, really good because it's surprisingly easy to get these guys in formation. And now we have so much power. Hit the city from far away. Nothing his land units would be able to do. You can see this. We're taking the city down to basically zero health with just three attacks from these overpowered Jongs right now. So as I predicted, that really does turn the tide in the war. Uh, move this guy forward. He's going to actually take the city on the next turn. Don't forget to build a couple land units just so you can actually take cities uh, when you're doing these kind of naval dom games. Okay, he popped out a little spearman as his last breath. Uh, I don't think that spearman is actually going to help you, buddy. Yeah... We're going to go ahead and attack here just to get all this XP right now. You actually have this amazing promotion. Take that. You hit the city. And is that the last of Simone? Uh, we meet Gilgamesh. Yeah, we meet Gilgamesh. That's really random, but always great to meet Gilgamesh. Kind of confusing how we meet Gilgamesh on the turn where I think we kill Simone. Yeah, Simone's dead, but priority was meeting Gilgamesh, apparently. This game is very weird sometimes. You are a patriot, sir. You're very patriotic for your lack of country right now. You will not stand the test of time. Beautiful. We take out our first Civ. It's already turn 102. A little bit slower than I wanted to kill him, but we do finally have his empire now. Can't complain about that. We have quite the empire here. Take a look. These are all of our cities right now. A little hard to see, I guess, against the, the ocean. But yeah, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 cities now. That's not bad. I mean, war is pretty overpowered, I gotta say. One of the nice things about being friends with Nubia over here is we don't have to worry about her backdooring us. Right, we don't want to get backdoored by a Manator. <laughs> Let me tell you, in multiple ways, don't want to get backdoored right now. So I think we're going to go to the west, just figure out who's here, and whoever we meet is going to die. Ooh, we can actually go ahead and pick up an industry over here on the Stingrays. This industry is going to give us plus 30% toward military units in the city. Okay, so that's good to keep in mind that this city now is going to be a military hub up here. Oh my god, you know you messed up when Gilgamesh denounces you. He is so friendly and nice. He just immediately denounces us. Yeah, goodbye. You're probably next, buddy. <laughs> Our capital just finished with this builder. This is a six-charge builder. Normal is three, remember, because we have this card in, Serfdom, which gives our builders two extra charges, and then we stole the Great Pyramids over here from Simone, which gives us an extra charge on all of our builders forevermore. So I really, really like builders at this point, because six is now the standard for all of our builders. Question is, what do we want to do now in the cap? The shipyard is really good because it gives us extra experience for all naval units, um, and it gives us bonus production equal to the adjacency bonus of the harbor, and it gives us production on all unimproved coast and lake tiles. So a lot of really, really good things that we get from the shipyard. And we have a fantastic plus five over here, Harbor, which can actually become a plus 10 if we put in the doubling card. So for all of those reasons, I think it actually makes sense to just buy the shipyard. I will do that. And you see the production go up everywhere. That's really, really good. Uh, and then now we should be able to just churn out units from the capital. Um, I think I want more Jongs. Question is Caravel or Jong? I think we go with Jongs here. All right, well, we discover industrialization in 200 BC. I think that's pretty solid. Hopefully we have coal because we're actually going to be pretty dependent on burning delicious fossil fuels. There's coal and niter here, so I guess that is a high priority city that we should get. Also coal here. That's very good. Uh, and then there's coal in Nubia's land. 
So first of all, let's go ahead and get this coal and make sure that we're starting to build up there. Uh, fortunately, we can go ahead and just purchase a builder. Gilgamesh really doesn't like my entire army being parked outside of his walls, but uh, my troops are merely passing by. Don't worry about that at all. We're totally cool right now, Gilgamesh. Do not worry about this enormous navy that's coming straight for you. I assure you, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. You're definitely not one minor blip in the story of my global conquest. Fear not, good sir. Ooh, we meet Catherine. That's cool. Definitely not going to kill you next. Uh, you look forward to knowing more about me. Well, you'll know a lot about me soon. It's an honor to meet you. Happy to exchange info. Paris is right here. Very conveniently close to my massive navy. Hmm, might have to do something about that. First of all, before you immediately denounce me, do you want to make a deal and give me a lot of gold? Because I have a feeling that you do. All right, well, she's willing to give us 406 gold right now and 10 gold per turn and open borders for my horses, which I'm definitely using, and my extra copy of cotton. So yeah, I would say that's a decent deal. Thank you very much, appreciate you. Okay, we discover exploration. That's very okay, helpful because now we get a lot more cards in our government. We unlock this next tier. Uh, this is going to give us more production toward districts. It's going to give us extra gold in cities with governors, but much, much more important is all the new governors. Uh, cool, we get extra points for that. Um, and then what cards do we want? Okay, so I think this is the perfect government. Our yields gained from pillaging and coastal raids are plus 50%. That's super important, right? You go from getting like 200 gold to 300 gold for raiding. It ends up making a huge, huge difference. Obviously, we're never taking out natural philosophy. This is giving us 80 science per turn. It's the best card of all time. Uh, Serfdom I still like because we're constantly getting more and more builders to get our amazing coastal tiles. So I like having six charge builders. Uh, I'm not too worried about becoming suzerain of that many city-states. The city-states are not that amazing. So instead, I'm going for extra loyalty and growth in all of our overseas territories, which is most of our territory at this point, because uh, we're heavy-duty colonizers. And then I like getting a little bit of extra gold, I think. Uh, it's not too much, but it helps. My last card, I thought originally I wanted plus four combat strength, but most of our units are actually naval ranged. Like the Jongs are naval ranged, not naval melee here. So I think I would actually have press gangs instead, which gives us double production toward all naval units. I think this is the perfect government for now. And I think this is the turn where we start beating the hell out of Gilgamesh. He is also back here. He's got a decent sized empire. So we'll just kind of annoy him in the back of his empire in the north over here with a couple units. I'm sending over this caravel. We have a Jong. We have a great admiral there. But for the most part, we're going to focus on taking these couple cities. Uh, our Jongs are basically in position now. And because he already denounced us, we can just declare a formal war. So I won't do anything too fancy. Yeah, he'll enjoy hearing my last breath. Unfortunately, it'll be the last breath he hears because he's the one who's going to die. Laugh it up, buddy. Laugh it up. I think I take your city on this turn, so I'm glad you find this amusing. Goodbye. Uh, let's see here. How much damage do these Jongs do? A lot. Yeah, 82 strength versus his city is 44. So one hit with the Jong, two hits with the Jong. Yeah, the city's almost gone. Uh, the walls are completely dead. I think we can just kill it with the Caraval potentially. Yeah, let's hit it with one more Jong, and then I think the Caraval just takes the city. Uh, go pop. City is zero health. Caraval's going to come in. And yep, one turn, we take the city. That's quite nice. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and move this guy in and promote to a Jong. I don't have the promotion card in, so that was kind of expensive, but is what it is. Obviously, keep the city. Um, and then how are we doing loyalty-wise? We're actually gaining loyalty. That's pretty epic. Regardless, I am going to go ahead and reassign Victor with Garrison Commander into the new city. Uh, and now we should be gaining loyalty very fast. Yeah, six turns. Okay, that's why Garrison Commander is so good. Probably should have done that earlier, to be honest. A lot of my cities like this one that already have the amazing campus and industrial zone are just going to start to churn out units, uh, specifically the Jongs. I think the naval ranged units, just having an absolute flood of these guys all over the map is the most important thing right now, and we have so much gold that we can afford it. 
And I actually think that we want to get the Venetian arsenal in this city, which gives us a second naval unit every time we build one. Uh, it's going to take a ton of production to get it, but I think maybe I can just buy a great engineer to build it faster. This is the one kind of game where that's not just a meme. It's actually useful to have it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and buy this tile and plop down Venetian arsenal right there. You have to build it next to an industrial zone, which is why I did that. Um, and then, yeah, I think we can maybe just buy one of these type of guys that gives us production. Uh, question is whether I just buy this guy. This is like ancient era, dude. I think I just buy him, actually. Yeah, I'm overthinking it. Wonder what this could be about. Ooh, military emergency. Against me, you say? That doesn't sound like fun. Not a big fan of military emergencies against me. Anyone else? Wow, it passed. That is hard to believe. Who voted with me? Gilgamesh really, really wanted this to happen, I suppose, but no one else did. Sorry, Gilgamesh, you have no friends. If it ain't broke, no. Um, all right. Well, I think this means our units get a little bit of a combat strength reduction and his units get more movement. But honestly, I'm not too, too worried about this. I feel like this doesn't actually matter. It's not going to slow us down because uh, we can just immediately take the city here. Yeah, we just take the city. Pop. Beautiful. Keep it. Thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and build Grandmaster's Chapel in the capital, which is going to let us buy units with faith. Uh, just kind of like a nice to have thing in case we have a bunch of extra faith lying around. I like that option. This Caravel, I think, can actually just take the city once we weaken it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and move this Jong forward. Slam into the city. Now is at zero health. We're going to go ahead and take it with this Caravel. Uh, yeah, just take it. Nice. Yeah, we're moving at like one plus city per turn now. This is really, really sweet. Uh, how's loyalty looking? Loyalty's going up. Uh, I will, I think, move Victor into that city. Yeah, I think that city is more important for loyalty. Uh, just because it's on the front line. I think I am just going to declare war on France here. Because I really don't think there's that much she can do to stop me. Uh, and she already denounced me, so yeah, formal war. This is going to be very, very fast. <laughs> Speed run is looking good. And then this guy's going to go ahead and actually upgrade into an ironclad. Oh my god, we have ironclads in 100 BC. Dude, the ironclad is awesome. Ironclad is freaking awesome. I'm so excited to show you guys that unit. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and pillage for health. Nice. And then I'm going to take the city. Take our first city from France. Beautiful. And then, because this is on this little isthmus here, we can actually move forward and through the city. Unfortunately, Hunza is apparently at war with us, and they're going to try and stop me. Uh, so we are actually going to have to deal with those. Maybe I just go around. Yeah, I think I just go around. Snatch this builder. Sweet. Yeah, I think I just ignore all of these units and keep moving forward, because the units can't really stop my navy. Dude, Paris is an amazing city. Holy cow. She has the Great Lighthouse, which is going to give us extra movement on all of our naval units. She has Oracle, which is going to make it cheaper for us to buy great people. She has the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which is a mod that I installed that gives me Leaning Tower of Pisa. I'll show you guys that uh, once we take it. But Paris is a really good city. She also has Niter. Uh, she also has this campus that has a library in it. Really, really excited to take Paris. We've got a lot of Jongs in position now. And yeah, our Jongs do a ton of damage. Beautiful. We are going to need a land unit in this area to actually take the city, though. So, conveniently, we have 2,574 gold at our disposal. What land unit makes sense? I think I do just want to get, like, a fast land unit. Yeah, maybe I get, like, a Courser, just because the Courser has a lot of movement, five movement, so we should be able to just run over there and take the city. All of the naval units that I've been popping out over here in the mainland, I'm actually going to start sending to the east, because we've conquered so, so much to the west over here. Yeah, like, look how far Paris is. This is Paris, right? Look how far Paris is from my main cities over here. So I think it actually makes more sense to send all of the new units to the east, and then they'll hopefully meet up kind of in this middle area around Scythia. I think that probably makes the most sense. So yeah, go ahead and go to the east here. Back over to this front, we are gonna use this Jong to actually clear the war card, I think. 
Musketman comes forward, kills him. Then we're going to send the Siege Tower forward. Nice, okay. He has Machu Picchu, which, not the most useful wonder for us, but, I mean, certainly not bad. Not going to complain about Machu Picchu. Going to go pillage this harbor, get a lot of gold for doing that, and pillage again, get some more gold. That was about 500 gold right there from pillaging on that one unit. Going to get another Ironclad, because why not? We have a stupidly strong military at this point. Holy cow. Uh, we also have a ton of gold. So I'm just going to go ahead and start buying up universities, I think. Even though they're pretty expensive. Just because I'd like to get to like 500 science. I think that would be fun. I still can't get over how good Guitarja is for science. I didn't even build these campuses. Like I didn't optimize them. These are Simone's. And this is a plus 11 right here. You're never going to see a plus 11 campus, basically ever, unless you're playing Guitarja. And then even the other districts, like this is a plus 5 industrial zone here because it's surrounded by 5 water tiles. Like, every district you build can be so, so good. Alright, well Paris got up walls just in time. My courser's actually finally in position now. So I'm going to go ahead and send this courser over here, get him in line, and I think we should actually be able to deal with these walls pretty efficiently here. One hit, and two hits, and how are those walls looking for you? Not too great. Not too great. Go ahead and reassign Victor, my best friend Victor, into Paris. And then how's the loyalty looking here? Increasing loyalty. Amazing. Love it. Man, this city is so, so good. The population does go down after you capture cities like this. Uh, but we've got a lot of really good stuff here. We've got a monument, we have a granary, we have the campus, which is a plus 10? No, okay, where it's a plus 5, but doubling it. Yeah, we're getting a lot of science. She built a harbor and a lighthouse. Pretty poorly placed harbor and commercial hub, I gotta say. But there is a ton of stuff in the city. And a lot of really productive tiles, too. Paris automatically becomes one of the best cities in my empire already. And then check this out. Great Lighthouse is going to give us plus one movement on all naval units. That's going to let us move a lot faster. Uh, and then Leaning Tower of Pisa is complicated, but we get extra gold, I guess. And then extra experience on naval units and then like random culture. All right, so it's not that good, <laughs> but it looks cool. It looks cool. You got to like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. This is a fun mod. Man, this is a sweet looking city. That is awesome. This is actually a really tricky map to speedrun because look at all of these like random walls over here that stop us from moving, right? Like this is a really crazy continuous wall and you have to go all the way around, especially because of where Simone put this city. This is actually not an access point, which is quite annoying. I could build a canal here and I probably should, but yeah, like this is a very choky map. This is an inland sea that doesn't actually go through because of where these cities are placed. There's no city here. And then this is also apparently an inland sea that I can't get through. So this is a really difficult map to speed run. I think I can finally take the capital now. Both of these guys have promotions, but I would rather just have them hit the city than use the promotions. Get it down to zero health and then pop. Nice, let's go. Okay, that city put up a good fight, but we do take the capital. Amazing. Uh, yes, obviously keep the city. All right, medieval era ends in two turns. And guys, you think we have enough era score? <laughs> two turns left until the era ends. We have 160 era score. Holy cow, we have been moving so, so fast in this era. Uh, I think we can just take the city now. Yeah, Jong slams into it really hard. Can the ironclad just take the city? think so. Boosh. Sorry, Gilgamesh. It's the end for you, my friend. I am the treachery that did this to you. I am the evil. I am God. I am all-powerful. I am Gitarja. Goodbye, my friend. Sumer will not stand the test of time. Very unfortunate. If you guys were ever wondering whether Kampungs are any good, we have a uh, 26 housing in the capital right now. Oh my god. It's a coastal city, too. Well, we won the military emergency. That's awfully nice. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. I was wondering where the rest of France was because I took these three cities so, so quickly. And then there's still all these French units lying around. And this is Scythia, right? 
and then this was all of Gilgamesh. So I was like, where the hell is the rest of France? Apparently, this is also a little enclave of France. Very, very weird to see the AI settle this far apart. Uh, but she does want to give us another free settler, so I can't complain about that. I just realized that our empire encircles the entire world now. So this is our capital, and then we settled these couple cities first. Go check out part one, by the way, if you haven't seen that, how quickly we were able to settle this whole area. And then in this video, we settled this city. Remember, we wanted to get the niter that was on this tile. And then check this out. We've expanded so far this way. We took Simone's land over here. We captured Gilgamesh over here. We took most of France over here. That actually Bordeaux, which is the westernmost city of our conquest, is not that far from this city, which I'm not going to try and pronounce. Look at how close these cities are. You can actually see them side by side in the same shot. This is all the way around the world. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've officially entered the Renaissance somehow in 125 AD. And checking out our dedications, normally I would just go Monumentality no matter what. In this case, I'm actually going to go Hicks on Dracones. I very rarely pick this one, and we're not going to really settle any cities. But the reason I like it is the plus two movement for naval units. That is going to be huge in letting us win faster. Our naval units already have a ludicrous amount of movement, thanks to the Great Lighthouse, our Great Admirals. I think we can get up to like 10 or 11 movement, though, if we pick this. We also get a little bit of extra loyalty, which I like. So I actually think this is a weird but good pick in this case, just because we're trying to speed run. I kind of stopped building infrastructure in this game, but I can't really say no to a plus 11 campus right off the bat in a city that we just conquered. Thank you very much. I will definitely take that. Go ahead and buy another university for a thousand gold, because why not? And while we're at it, I think I'm just going to go ahead and treat myself to a granary. Again, because why not? We have a lot of gold. And what do I want now in this city? I think just make me ironclads, actually. Yeah, that seems good. All right, we circumnavigated the world. That's pretty fun in 125 AD. Seems historically accurate to me. Scythia doesn't like the fact that my entire navy is now parked outside of her borders. And honestly, I couldn't care less. So yeah, let's just be at war with everyone. I know I've betrayed your trust. I don't think I will pay though. Hot take, but I think you're going to be the one who pays. Unfortunate that we can't steal this settler right now. Uh, but I think it's more important that we just take the city... So yeah, this strong is going to attack for XP, and then we're going to go ahead and hit with the Ironclad. Goodbye! GG, France will not stand the test of time. So we've now defeated three civs. There was Simone, there was Gilgamesh, and then Catherine. Uh, we see two other civs here, and then there's two that we still haven't discovered somehow, which is crazy to me. Uh, but we should be able to discover them pretty soon. Check it out, these guys have 10 movement absolutely ludicrous that's why we picked that golden age so there's nothing that the ai will be able to do to me now like they could have the strongest units right next to my jongs and i can just run away and they'll never ever catch me that is freaking awesome i'm just gonna park all of my jongs outside the city i think and start attacking because why not yeah honestly i think this is the play it's a really strong city her capital but i don't think it's nearly strong enough because our navy is just freaking huge right now all right, we meet Cleopatra. Very interesting. Okay, so we have one more sieve left to meet now. Cleo doing a good job of hiding, but I can't blame her. Not with those good looks. I am not a worthy ally to you. I am a very worthy enemy, and I'm happy to exchange info on your capital. Where are you, Cleo? She's got to be in the north. Yeah, okay, Cleo's over here. She's pretty strong. Damn, 666 military score. That's quite good. She only has 93 science, though. So she's probably going to be our toughest opponent, but I'm not too scared of her, to be honest. Uh, she's somehow been hiding over here and hasn't seen me despite how strong she is. But I have just been, like, slowly sending units over to the north to start exploring. So I will just start redirecting these guys over to Cleopatra now, everyone who's in the north. The Atoll map is such a weird shape. There's all these like crazy snake continents, and fortunately we just found another one of these one tile openings over here and we can get through in the North Pole. What a weird, weird snaky map this is. 
go ahead and make one of our favorite kind of deals with Cleopatra, where we give her stuff that we literally don't care about, or in the case of diplomatic favor, are about to lose in exchange for basically a thousand gold and ten gold per turn. And cheese, don't forget, gotta love cheese. So thank you, Cleo, for your generous donation that I most certainly will not use to kill you in a second. And then in the capital here, ooh, our Courser almost died but has a promotion. That's very convenient. And we should be able to take the city now with just a humble little ironclad. Beautiful. Capital is mine. Thank you very much. We're going to have very bad loyalty for a second here, right? We're going to lose in seven turns uh, because we're just on a little island. However, I think if we were to put Victor in the city... Uh, what does that do for loyalty? Yep, loyalty's going up. Problem completely solved. Man, I freaking love Victor. Keep the city. This is a beautiful city, too. She's got Temple of Artemis here, which I love. It's an awesome wonder. She's got a casual plus eight theater square. Really, really nice. Uh, what is this? This is a commercial hub with a market. She's got Apadonna. Yeah, she's got a lot of good stuff in the city. Love it. Welcome to the Empire. This humble warrior is in a little bit of trouble right next to the caravel, so go ahead and promote into my first line infantry. Beautiful. And then we're also going to go ahead and buy this coal tile. Should have done that a second ago and get a builder to improve it. All right, we can finally settle this city in Yosemite with coal and with niter. That's a real fun. Go ahead and plop that down. Get a bunch of era score that we're probably not going to need. I think we win before the next era anyway. Look at this cool tile. Two, 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 two tile. That's fun. Uh, we're already hit four housing because of our golden age. Uh, so go ahead and buy a granary. Give us some extra housing there. And then I'll also go ahead and get a builder so I can improve this niter tile. Man, infinity gold is so much fun. If you're ever wondering how good is nine movement, look at this ironclad all the way over here. First of all, check out the ironclads, man. The ironclads are really freaking cool looking right over the seals as well. That's awesome. But yeah, how good is nine movement? This is how good nine movement is. My city, thank you very much. Keep it. And then all of these Jongs that were surrounding that city can actually move forward and hit this city now from the back. Love that. Yeah, this might be a different color. Okay, I think this is actually the other sieve. Really, really weird. Okay, yeah, this is a Chinese city name, I'm pretty sure. So I think China is down here. That's crazy. So China's almost dead, too. We might be able to win this game in, like, ten turns, guys. All right, we discover refining. So that means we get oil and, ooh, we get battleships. That is freaking huge. Holy cow, with a battleship, we're going to be able to do so much damage. All of our Jongs, I believe, can become battleships now. Might as well get our first ever battleship. Awesome. Check out how cool the battleships look. I mean, these are pretty cool units too. This is Caravals from Scythia, but I mean, my battleship makes them look awfully, awfully small. All right, well, we found the Barbarian Army. Oh my. This is what happens on the naval maps because no one actually discovers the Barbarians, and so they just keep spawning and spawning units to infinity. I mean, fortunately, most of these guys are like ancient area units, but still pretty wild. I think we can take this city now, so we're going to go ahead and attack and attack and then we can actually go ahead and send in the ironclad to finish the city perfect yeah i think it ended up just making more sense to completely eliminate scythia from the game both because it's fun and because i'm pretty sure the last of china is over here well it looks like cleopatra is about to take the capital of nubia over here and i'm getting a little bit tired of not being at war with cleopatra so, yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and declare a formal war against her. Okay. Osiris will be pleased to welcome my enemies. I think Osiris is about to be welcoming you, my friend Cleo. Goodbye. We are now at war with everyone other than Nubia, who's our friend, and I believe China, who's at the bottom of the map over here. But, yeah, this is very, very good. It is turn 129, and I think we are quite close to winning now. All right, turn 130, and our friendship with Nubia has finally expired. Very unfortunate for a Manator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take all of her gold from her. Uh, I'll give you, yeah, some random luxury. Perfect. So now she's bankrupt. And uh, go ahead and... Okay, we can't do formal war. Yeah, surprise war. Don't really care about grievances anymore, right?
Cool. So we're now basically at war with everyone, other than, I think, China, who we haven't met yet. I think we might actually be able to take this city on this turn, because the battleships have three range, which I just realized. So yeah, go ahead and hit the city from a mile away. Perfect. This battleship can hit the city. It's almost dead now, and then we hit with the man-at-arms. Take the city! Eliminate Scythia from the game. I don't know why it keeps freezing on this screen in particular, but... Yeah, Scythia's gone. You will not be remembered, unfortunately. And I'm pretty sure I will be remembered because I have taken over the entire planet. And we do finally meet the last Civ of the game. What's up, Kinshi Wong? Don't think I've ever actually played against this version of China before. That's cool. Uh, it is an honor to meet you, and I would love to sample your hospitality. Scythia will not stand the test of time, and where are you, China? Over here. I'm pretty sure this was China's original capital, though. Yeah, that was the original capital of China. So we actually don't need to keep fighting. I actually don't even need to go to war with China in this game. Very interesting. Crazy to have a domination win. No, I'm definitely keeping the city. Crazy to have a domination win where you actually don't have to go to war with one of the civilizations ever. Dude, look at all these stats. China's at 170 score. I'm at 1102. My military is ridiculous. Almost 700 science. Truly unbelievable. If you look at the civs that are left, it was kind of a girl power game, but I'm pretty sure we won that battle. <laughs> Forgot about this settler, but I guess I'll go ahead and found another random city. Why not? Perfect one tile island. Already four population with crazy tiles around it because Guitarja. All right, we unlock combustion, and that means we have tanks. We have tanks, everybody. It is 400 AD. I did that just for the memes, to be perfectly honest with you, but that should be fun if we're able to get a tank. <laughs> Your reputation is forever tarnished. If only you knew the extent to which that is true. Goodbye, my friend. Took him two turns to denounce me. Kind of surprising. Ooh, we got Ferdinand Magellan. Kind of fun to just see all of the great admirals in the entire game as we systematically get each one, like, every turn. I bought open borders with China just so I could explore a little bit with my cavalry over here and see more of the map. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear out this barbarian camp that's definitely been bothering him the entire game. You're welcome, China. And I'll go ahead and kill this unit, too. I'm just such a gentleman, honestly. The city's name is literally Heh. <laughs> so, uh, Heh. <laughs> think I'm gonna take you, Mr. City. Boom smash we take the city of he perfect uh and then i'm gonna go ahead and bring this jong didn't even realize i still had any jongs left and hit the capital go ahead and bring this battleship over here and hit the capital from very very far away looks good uh what is this battleship uh you can come forward and also hit the capital which is basically dead now you hit the capital, which is basically dead, and then line infantry finishes it off. Perfection. Okay, yeah, that was a very, very bad turn from Nubia. Keep the city. Use the city's walls to kill this last unit. Wow. What an absolutely dominating war with Nubia. Basically, are going to kill Nubia in like three turns. Unreal. Remember that war with Simone that was taking absolutely forever? Yeah, this is a little bit of a different story, I would say. Uh, John can move forward and promote into another battleship. Going to slam into this guy who's almost dead, and this John can kill him. Oh my god, such a crazy dominating win over here. The Commonwealth of Venice in their armory. Wow, we just built the Venetian arsenal. I totally forgot that, that I had been building that this whole time. time. Peace. Probably could have done that a little bit faster, to be honest, but the that is real funny to me. Uh, yeah, we got a bunch of stuff, don't care. Oh my god, look at the Venetian arsenal over here. Kind of nice, I gotta say. I feel like this whole capital area is just gorgeous. Look at all these, like, universities. Got the industrial zone over here. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, we got the government plaza, all these harbors, the lighthouses, all of the fishing boats. This is a really, really cool area. Forgot about the Rock of Gibraltar, too, that we randomly settled near. That's fun. Dude, look at this navy. Holy cow. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Everyone attack. Why not? Boom, 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 boom. Everyone hit the city. Don't really think there's anything that she can do about this. Yeah, city's basically dead. I think I can just take it with this ironclad over here. Nice, that's my city now. I'll keep it. You know the drill. 
go ahead and put in Victor for loyalty. Boom. Instantly, the city is, yeah, 37 turns until we lose it. I think we should be okay. Uh, which guys can I actually bring forward? This Ironclad can move all the way forward and promote into a Destroyer. Perfect. Look at this freaking aircraft carrier, dude. <laughs> I should not have an aircraft carrier right now. Oh, man. It looks nice on the Mediterranean Sea over here. If you've seen my Civ videos before, you know I love this mod. This is the history of the world since the dawn of time. Check it out. First 50 turns or so, we're just kind of establishing ourselves. That's the capital, our second city, third city. We're going pretty quick, right? That's not bad. Fourth city over here. It's about turn 60, right? And we've got four, now five cities. We meet Simone Boulevard over here, and we are going to immediately go to war. We kept losing these cities to loyalty, that was so frustrating. Finally, we take him out. We meet Gilgamesh, we immediately kill Gilgamesh. Meet France, immediately kill France over here. Uh, this is us taking over Scythia, that's us Nubia, that's, uh, oh my god, Cleopatra. You can see what a crazy snowball it was after about turn 100. We just took the entire map, and we also explored the entire map. We've basically seen the entire world. Pretty wild how quickly we were able to do that. This may or may not be the turn when we win the game. As you can see, we've got our entire army assembled outside Rocketet. Uh, let's see if we can't just take it out. So we're going to go ahead and hit with every single battleship. A lot of these guys are fleets, actually. So these are two battleships and one that I've combined. So let's see how much damage we can do if literally every single one of these units attacks that is able to attack. Uh, this guy can hit, and this guy can hit. Okay, it looks like we're maybe one turn away. Huh, alright, this is a really strong city. I had basically all of my forces over here, but I wasn't, like, perfectly lined up, maybe? Maybe I can take the city, and now it's under siege. Go ahead and hit with the line infantry. I guess I don't have enough movement. Maybe this guy can kill him? Ooh, we are painfully close to being able to take this city. Yeah, very, very close. Uh, battleship fleet can go over here, I guess. Yeah, okay, we'll take the city on the next turn. Pretty sure this is the last of Nubia over here, so yeah, just for vanity's sake, I think I'm gonna knock out Nubia with a man-at-arms, because it's funny to me. Bye-bye, Manator. Your pyramids are long gone, let me tell ya. <laughs> oh my god, what a dominating, dominating game, holy cow. Uh, Nubia will not stand the test of time. It is turn 139. Technically, that means if I'm able to win on this turn, it's actually a 138 victory. Uh, for whatever reason, that's how Civ works, because turn 139 isn't going to actually complete. So this will be a turn 138 win, assuming we're able to get it, and I'm pretty sure we will be. Go ahead and attack with all of these battleships. Make sure the city is completely, completely destroyed. And, uh, I think this line infantry will have the great pleasure of knocking out the very last Civ in the game. Boosh. Go ahead and watch the video. Throughout the ages. History is written from the hand of the victor. By your actions this day, You ensure our people a glorious tomorrow. Oh yeah, glorious tomorrow. Love to see it. Check out the ranking here. Yeah, we only ranked 10th. I mean, the thing with these rankings is the quicker you win, the actual lower your rank is, right? Because you have less of a chance to accumulate score. So we're actually penalized for winning that quickly. Check out these graphs here. I mean, a lot of these will be, I don't know, pretty dominant, pretty boring, actually. Look at the science. Our science was just truly, truly off the chart. Uh, what else would be interesting? Our gold was insane. You can see these crazy, crazy spikes in our gold. Uh, player score. Yeah, we had by far the best score. I think maybe a fun one would be cities captured. Uh, yeah, where is it? Yeah, I mean, you can see we captured over 30 cities in this game. That is ridiculous. And then if you look at cities lost, this is just all to us, basically. Like, you can see the snowball happening of Simone kind of putting up a pretty good fight, us not being able to take the capital for a couple turns and losing these two cities, and then everyone else in the game fell like dominoes. Utterly, utterly dominant, dominant win. Hope you guys enjoyed it. These videos take so long to make and to edit, probably about 40, 50 hours of time in total. So if you did like this video, 
please do go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. I would really, really appreciate the support. And let me know in the comments what leader you want me to play next. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you all in the next one.